The topic of this evening's talk is women's rights in Islam protected or subjugated. Women's rights, according to the Oxford Dictionary, is those rights that promote a position of social and legal equality of women with men. Women's rights, according to Oxford Dictionary, means rights that promote a position of social and legal equality of women with men. I am not too much concerned about the conclusions, the modern ideas, and the categorical statements made by scientists and armchair experts who are, un who are unexperienced as how a life should be led by a woman. I'm going to base my conclusions on experience which have been proven by facts. Because experience and holistic truth is the sure test between the gold of truth and the glitter of theory. We have to check our intellect because many a times our mind can go astray. Indeed, there was a time when the great minds of that day they thought that the world was flat. If we agree with how the Western media portrays the women's rights in Islam, we have no option but to agree that the women's rights in Islam, they are subjugated and they are not protected. The Western talk of women's liberalization is nothing but a disguised form of exploitation of a body, of deprivation of honor and degradation of a soul. The Western society claiming to uplift the woman have actually degraded her to a status of concubine, mistresses and society butterflies which are employed as mere tools in the hands of sex marketers and pleasure seekers which are hidden behind the colorful screen of art and culture. Islam gave a woman their due rights 1400 years ago. In the Yomil Jahiliya, it was known as the days of ignorance. Islam gave women the due rights. If we go back into history and analyze, when we read the history of Babylonian civilization, at that time, if a man committed murder, instead of him being punished, his wife was put to death. When we read the history of the Greek civilization, they had a mythological person by the name of Pandora, who was a woman, who was the cause of evil and misfortune in society. In the Greek civilization, the women were used for sex and pleasure. When we read the history of Roman civilization, when the Roman civilization reached its peak, when it reached its peak, a man was permitted to even kill his wife. Women were used for sex and pleasure. Nudity and promiscuity was common. When we read the history of the Egyptian civilization, they considered the woman as a sign of the devil. When we read the Arab civilization before the Quran was revealed, very often when a female child was born, she was buried alive. Alhamdulillah. Praise be to Allah. After the revelation of the Quran, 
And after the teaching of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the last and final messenger of the Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the woman got the due rights. It uplifted the status of the woman. Imagine in the days of ignorance, it was known as Yomil Jahiliya. The Arabs were the most ignorant people of that time. And after the revelation of the Quran, the woman, they got the due rights. Before we discuss the women's rights in Islam, I would like to point a few things. Muslims today, approximately, they constitute 20 to 25 percent of the world population. One fifth to one fourth of the world population today are Muslims. Some Muslim societies, they're close to Islam. While the others, they are far away from Islam. If anyone wants to judge the woman's rights in Islam, he should not judge according to what Muslims do or what the Muslim society does. The woman's rights in Islam should be based on the authentic sources of Islam. The authentic sources of Islam are the glorious Quran, the last and final revelation of Almighty God and the authentic hadith of the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So women rights in Islam should only be judged and based on the authentic sources of Islam, the glorious Quran and the authentic sayings of the beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa The Quranic verses will never contradict among themselves. Neither would the Sai Hadith. The Quran and the Sai Hadith, then conformity. They will never contradict themselves. Yet we find that there are Muslim scholars, they have difference of opinion in many aspects of the women. The main reason is that these scholars, they quote one particular verse of the Quran and neglect all the other verses of the Quran. The Quran should be read as a whole. And if we read the Quran as a whole, most of these differences will be solved. It's the duty of every true Muslim, whether man or woman, to seek, to seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Almighty God. The main aim should not be to get famous or to satisfy one's own ego. The main aim of every Muslim, whether man or woman, is to seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Men and women in Islam, they are equal. But equality does not mean identicality. They are equal, but they are not identical. Depending upon the biological makeup of the man and woman, There are differences depending upon the biological makeup of the man and woman, depending upon the physiological makeup, depending upon the psychological makeup, depending upon the physical makeup. Almighty God Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given different roles for men and women. Many a times they're exactly the same, they're identical. And sometimes they differ depending upon the biological background the physiological background, the psychological background, the physical background. He is our creator. He knows what is best for us. I have divided my talk, the women's rights in Islam, into six broad headings. The spiritual rights of the women in Islam, the economic rights of the women in Islam, the social rights of the women in Islam, the educational rights of the women in Islam, the legal rights of the women in Islam, and the political rights of the women in Islam. I have divided my talk into six broad headings. And this is the same question that was asked by the Christians to Prophet Muhammad And he was, what should I answer? We can keep on speaking about God. Then the revelation came. Surah Ikhlas. 
chapter number 112, verse number 1 to 4. Kul huwa Allahu ahad. Say he's Allah one and only.